Pate or Pate Frere is the name of various French businesses that were founded and originally run by the Pate brothers of France starting in 1896. In the early 1900s, Pate became the world's largest film equipment and production company, as well as a major producer of phonograph records. In 1908, Pate invented the newsreel that was shown in cinemas before a feature film. Pate is a major film production and distribution company, owning a number of cinema chains through its subsidiary Les Cinemas Pate Goman and television networks across Europe. It is the second oldest operating film company behind Goman Film Company which was established in 1895. The Pate Brothers by Adrien Barrère The company was founded as Société Pate Frère in Paris, France on September 28, 1896, by the four brothers Charles, Emile, Théophile, and Jacques Pate. During the first part of the 20th century, Pate became the largest film equipment and production company in the world, as well as a major producer of phonograph records. Headquarters of Associated British Pate at 142 Water Street in London The driving force behind the film operation and phonograph business was Charles Pate, who had helped open a phonograph shop in 1894 and established a phonograph factory at Chateau on the western outskirts of Paris. The Pate brothers began selling Edison and Columbia phonographs and accompanying cylinder records and later, the brothers designed and sold their own phonographs that incorporated elements of other brands. Soon after, they also started marketing pre-recorded cylinder records. By 1896 the Pate brothers had offices and recording studios not only in Paris, but also in London, Milan, and Street. Petersburg. Pate manufactured cylinder records until approximately 1914. In 1905 the Pate brothers entered the growing field of disc records. In France, Pate became the largest and most successful distributor of cylinder records and phonographs. These, however, failed to make headway in foreign markets such as the United Kingdom and the United States where other brands were already in widespread use. In December 1928, the French and British Pate phonograph assets were sold to the British Columbia Graphophone Company. In July 1929, the assets of the American Pate Record Company were merged into the newly formed American Record Corporation. The Pate and Pate Marconi labels and catalog still survive, first as imprints of Emmy and now currently Amy's successor Parlophone Records. As the phonograph business became successful, Pate saw the opportunities offered by new means of entertainment and in particular by the fledgling motion picture industry. Having decided to expand the record business to include film equipment, the company expanded dramatically. To finance its growth, the company took the name Compagnie Générale des Établissements Pate Frère Phonographies and Cinematographies in 1897, and its shares were listed on the Paris Stock Exchange. In 1896, Mitchell Mark of Buffalo, New York, became the first American to import Pate films to the United States, where they were shown in the Vitascope Theater. In 1907, Pate acquired the Lumiere Brothers patents and then set about to design an improved studio camera and to make their own film stock. Their technologically advanced equipment, new processing facilities built at Vincennes, and aggressive merchandising combined with efficient distribution systems allowed them to capture a huge share of the international market. They first expanded to London in 1902 where they set up production facilities and a chain of movie theatres. By 1909, Pate had built more than 200 movie theatres in France and Belgium and by the following year they had facilities in Madrid, Moscow, Rome and in New York City plus Australia and Japan. Slightly later, they opened a film exchange in Buffalo, New York. Through its American subsidiary, it was part of the MPPC cartel of production in the United States. It participated in the Paris Film Congress in February 1909 as part of a plan to create a similar European organization. The company withdrew from the project in a second meeting in April which fatally undermined the proposal. Prior to the outbreak of World War I, Pate dominated Europe's market in motion picture cameras and projectors. It has been estimated that at one time, 60% of all films were shot with Pate equipment. In 1908, Pate distributed Excursion to the Moon by Segundo de Chaman, an imitation of George's Melies's A Trip to the Moon. Pate and Melies worked together in 1911. George's Melies made a film Baron Munchausen's Dream, his first film to be distributed by Pate. Pate's relationship with Melies soured, and in 1913 Melies went bankrupt and his last film was never released by Pate. Worldwide, the company emphasized research, investing in such experiments as hand-colored film and the synchronization of film and gramophone recordings. In 1908, Pate invented the newsreel that was shown in theaters prior to the feature film. 
The news clips featured the Pate logo of a crowing rooster at the beginning of each reel. In 1912, it introduced 28mm non-flammable film and equipment under the brand name Pathoscope. Pate News produced cinema newsreels from 1910, up until the 1970s when production ceased as a result of mass television ownership. In the United States, beginning in 1914, the company's film production studios in Fort Lee and Jersey City, New Jersey, where their building still stands. The Heights, Jersey City produced the extremely successful serialized episodes called The Perils of Pauline. By 1918 Pate had grown to the point where it was necessary to separate operations into two distinct divisions. With Emile Pate as chief executive, Pate Records dealt exclusively with phonographs and recordings while brother Charles managed Pate Cinema which was responsible for film production, distribution, and exhibition. 1922 saw the introduction of the Pate Baby Home Film System using a new 9.5mm film stock which became popular over the next few decades. In 1921, Pate sold off its United States motion picture production arm, which was renamed Pate Exchange and later merged into RKO Pictures, disappearing as an independent brand in 1931. Pate sold its British film studios to Eastman Kodak in 1927 while maintaining the theater and distribution arm. Play Media Pate Baby 9. 5mm film version of La Cité Foudraille Pate was already in substantial financial trouble when Bernard Nadin took control of the company in 1929. Studio founder Charles Pate had been selling assets for several years to boost investor value and keep the studio's cash flow healthy. The company's founder had even sold Pate's name and rooster trademark to other companies in return for a mere 2% of revenues. Nadine had the bad luck to take charge of the studio just as the Great Depression convulsed the French economy. Nadine attempted to steady Pate's finances and implement modern film industry practices at the studio. Nadine acquired another film studio. Société des Cineromans, from Arthur Burnett and Gaston Leroux, which enabled Pate to expand into projector and electronics manufacturing. He also bought the Fournier chain of motion picture theaters and rapidly expanded the chain's nationwide presence. The French press, however, attacked Nadin mercilessly for his stewardship of Pate. Many of these attacks were anti Semitic. Pate Nadin did well under Nadin's guidance. Between 1930 and 1935, Despite the world economic crisis, the company made 100 million francs in profits, and produced and released more than 60 feature films. He resumed production of the newsreel Pate News, which had not been produced since 1927. Nadin also invested heavily into research and development to expand Pate's film business. In 1929, he pushed Pate into sound film. In September, the studio produced its first sound feature film, and its first sound newsreel a month later. Nadin also launched two new cinema-related magazines, Pate Review and Aqualité Feminin, to help market Pate's films and build consumer demand for cinema. Under Nadin, Pate also funded the research of Henri Chrétien, who developed the anamorphic lens. Nadin expanded Pate's business interests into communications industries other than film. In November 1929, Nadin established France's first television company, Television Baird Nadin. A year later, he purchased a radio station in Paris and formed a holding company to run what would become a burgeoning radio empire. But in 1935, Pate went bankrupt. In order to finance the company's continued expansion, Pate's board of directors voted in 1930 to issue shares worth 105 million francs. But with the depression deepening, only 50% of the shares were purchased. One of the investor banks collapsed due to financial difficulties unrelated to Pate's problems, and Pate was forced to follow through with the purchase of several movie theater chains it no longer could afford to buy. Although the company continued to make a profit, it lost more money than it could bring in. The collapse of Pate led French authorities to indict Bernard Nadin on charges of fraud. Nadin was accused of financing the purchase of the company without any collateral, of bilking investors by establishing fictitious shell corporations, and negligent financial mismanagement. Nadin was even accused of hiding his Romanian and Jewish heritage by changing his name. Nadin was indicted and imprisoned in 1939. A second indictment was brought in 1941, and he was convicted shortly thereafter. He was removed from prison by the French authorities in September 1942, delivered to the Nazis, and deported to Auschwitz where he died in October 1942. The company was forced to undergo a restructuring in 1943 and was acquired by Adrian Ramage. Over the years, 
The business underwent a number of changes including diversification into producing programs for the burgeoning television industry. During the 1970s, operating theaters overtook film production as Pate's primary source of revenue. In the late 1980s, Italian financier Giancarlo Peretti tried to make a bid for Pate, even taking over Canon and renaming it Pate Communications in anticipation of owning the storied studio. Peretti's shady past, however, raised enough eyebrows in the French government that the deal fell through. It turned out to be a fortunate decision, as Peretti later took over Metro Goldwyn Mayer, and merged it with his Pate Communications group to create MGM Pate Communications in 1990, only to lose it in bankruptcy in late 1991. In 1990 chart years, a French conglomerate led by Jérôme Seydoux, took control of the company. As a result of the deregulation of the French telecommunications market, in June 1999, Pate merged with Vivendi, the exchange ratio for the merger fixed at three Vivendi shares for every two Pate shares. The Wall Street Journal estimated the value of the deal at two US dollars. 59 billion. Following the completion of the merger, Vivendi retained Pate's interests in British Sky Broadcasting and Canal Satellite, a French broadcasting corporation but then sold all remaining assets to Jérôme Seydoux's family-owned corporation, Fournier S.A., which changed its name to Pate. Pate Multiplex in Dietlikon, Switzerland a list of current and former assets of Pate. In its home country France, Pate self-distributes its films through Pate distribution. On home video, their films are distributed by Fox Pate Europa, a joint venture between Walt Disney Studios Home Entertainment, Pate and Europa Corp. From the beginning of the 80s, Pate released their movies through Guild Film Distribution and Guild Home Video. After Pate purchased Guild in 1996, 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment took over as the home video distributor. While the then-renamed Guild Pate Cinema took over theatrically, which was eventually renamed as Pate Distribution in 1998. In 2009, Pate closed their standalone distribution unit in the UK and instead partnered up with Warner Brothers. Pictures to release their movies theatrically, while retaining 20th Century Fox as the home video distributor. In February 2011, Fox took over as Pate's theatrical distributor as well. With the purchase of 20th Century Fox from the Walt Disney Company in March 2019, Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures took over distributing Pate's material, releasing Misbehavior and the Human Voice. On June 7, 2021, it was announced that Warner Brothers. Pictures would return to distributing Pate films in the UK after the then-current deal with Disney expired on June 30, 2021, with the first films being released under the new deal being Parallel Mothers and The Duke. Unlike the 2009 deal, this new deal will include home video and digital rights as well, which Fox Disney previously handled. French French British. Thanks for watching.